everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Thanks again so much for tuning in. I'm Simmer Chase. Today's episode number 23 of our speed builds. This one is a, another historic build. It's part of our Sears Kit House series, and this is now number four of our builds. So this one is a quaint bungalow, as you can see here. Um, and then above that is actually the Windenburg Tower that I built. So that up there is giant and huge, opulent. It's like four million simoleons. And they have this tiny little quaint house down here in the bottom that's about 178,000 simoleons. Um, and of course, that one up there took me like two years to build almost like just you know, on and on and on as packs kept coming out and things like that because I had so many rooms and not enough like original unique content to be able to put in there to where everything was so redundant, you know. So in that build, I ended up going and uh, kind of waiting over time. And then uh, fortunately, uh, last year, I was able to actually get it up on the gallery. And so it was really exciting when I finally was able to say, okay, yeah, let's, I can go ahead and let this go now because there's finally enough different bedroom style available and just different room types, you know, that you could finally do. And so that's what brought me then to the Sears Kit House series here as I've kind of gone along in the channel because there's finally enough content in here in the game to kind of be able to get more specific with detailed styling and to make it more true to uh, real life. So today we have the Kilborn. Yes, the Kilborn. It is a, a quaint little bungalow. And they offered it for like five rooms, I think, something like that. And what I did was went ahead and maximized the whole attic space, unlike they had in the original plan. So you can actually just go and really utilize everything. But again, that kind of involves a lot more like build by mode object stuff. And then also on top of it, it's got a ton of... Um, you know, just the debug options, that kind of stuff. Um, so there's no CC in here, no custom content or anything like that that you'd have to download. But there is a lot of build by stuff. So you'll see in the video me cut certain parts and stuff and then go zoom into a certain room as I'm working on it. And you may see pieces like, oh, where'd that come from? It's me mindlessly sitting there for like a few minutes here and there, you know, just going through the entire list to find like one object or like one thing. Um, like I'll draw attention to, you'll see in the video, but here, this like patio area is actually very true to the actual design, but I had to make it myself because we didn't have anything whatsoever that's just square, square on top of square, square for like a railing, which would be super awesome because then it would have been more realistic. And so, and there was nothing real thick and, and concrete looking which is what this half is just like concrete squares um, kind of formed together there to kind of create sort of like a privacy, but then like let in some light then through the porch. So I created that myself. And then um, kind of as well with a lot of these other pieces that you're seeing here on the side as well, there's just, <laughs> I'll scoot over. But yeah, if you see, there's just quite a bit of, of things here um, to the side that you can really kind of, kind of get as well and see here with just sort of the design and then the top, the corbels, that kind of stuff. It took a little bit of trial and error there to get everything kind of situated just right, but it's pretty true to the original rendering and design in terms of the outside and then the inside. You know, I just, I actually kept the staircase um, design sort of thing. I just moved it closer to the doorway so that when you walk in, you can just kind of turn left and go upstairs if you want or you can then go in behind and through the kitchen and all that kind of stuff. So thank you guys so much again for tuning in. And as always, I'm Simmer Chase. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe in the links below. And stay proud. Go out and do something magical. And let's go ahead and dive into this build now. So the Kilborn house, I really love this house. It was one of my most favorites to do. I had to do a lot of editing here in the video though because there was just like a lot of objects I ended up not using as I kind of went along and started looking at the um, at the rendering a lot more because I was like, oh, you know, I can use these objects or those objects. And so then I threw a bunch of things in to kind of see what stuck. 
and then over time I just kind of morph my idea a little bit, but the general design of the house does stay the same through the build. Um, but I just kind of start pulling and pushing things a little bit here and there to really maximize the square footage and kind of the usability of the plan. Um, so like the whole upstairs, again, I probably would have deleted that, not even used it. But because I didn't really have any bedrooms on the first floor, I went ahead and just put all our bedrooms up there and then also fit two bathrooms. So it was, and there's like a Jack and Jill, so maybe like there's a teen or somebody like that. And then... Um, or like a guest and then the other one would be like the children's room so it kind of decked it out with peak and a little bit of um, frills and just just a little more um, fun features in there so now I'm just kind of building out the railing and this was just supposed to be like just concrete square blocks kind of stuck on each other but unfortunately um, we don't have anything like that in the railing so I just kind of had to make my own um, based on kind of what I could you know, kind of muster up from the built by objects and the, um, then also through our debug options too. So I really liked that the rendering kind of was, I had a lot more, um, landscaping and things like that within it because I was like, oh, um, some of my others didn't really have much to go off of, so I kind of, you know, did my own a little bit here, but this one actually had quite a bit of landscaping and the rendering, and I was like, oh, this would be marvelous because I could actually, like, pop in some really fun, like, flower beds and just kind of really go hog wild a little bit with that. And so I, and my vision was to make, kind of make this, like, whimsical pool, but then I ended up having to rotate and shift the house because it was kind of facing the wrong way for the gallery, but then also because I wanted to try and get the house like kind of pulled up a little bit more too. So I ended up, you know, rotating, moving it a little bit. So then at that point I decided to kind of shift gears a little bit on the pool and just kind of make it a little more of a botanical style front yard and then kind of, you know, really bring it home to the original concept of the bungalow and of the really quaint, cozy space. So I just tried to, you know, maximize it every bit of tile or square footage within this as I possibly could. So like the bathroom's tucked underneath the stairwell. Um, and then the laundry room's kind of tucked in the back um, on the second floor. I created like a little tiny hallway for it to go um, so we could kind of get a room and through there and not really waste what few windows we have up there. So I kind of created just a lot of different zones up in that little common area space so that I could really maximize that little tiny bit. So um, now we've just kind of bringing together the first floor bathroom. I really like being able to use magazine rack too and kind of put um, like, you know, readables um, there by the potty as well and kind of just, uh, make it clear like oh yeah here this is company can use this um i'll probably throw it away when you're done but here it is so um now i'm just kind of bringing in the kitchen and getting all that together i really love being able to build kitchens that are huge like that's always like my signature i never will build a house in the sims that doesn't have a giant kitchen pretty much unless i'm building a tiny house but then i still make the biggest tiniest kitchen you've ever seen because I just really want to be able to have a lot of form and function and to kind of be able to have a lot of space to spread out and especially if you have a lot of sims in a house like this house could probably accommodate five or six if you start gathering all those people or sims into a kitchen in one spot it's like too tight arguments start happening that kind of thing and i feel like the kitchen should really be like the heart of the home and so i like building like breakfast nooks or eat in kitchen areas so that's kind of what we have here instead of like a formal dining room per se it could definitely fit but i went ahead and put in some uh, pet amenities instead there but you know over there to the corner um behind sort of where the bar ends you can put one over on that side or then by the windows as well and tuck a cute little rectangle table in there if you wanted um so i just really wanted to make sure that there's just a lot of space for pretty much whatever people wanted to do with it and so I'm just kind of leaving you breadcrumbs on like, hey, this is kind of how I would set it up. And you could, you know, tear everything out and put walls in and do all that kind of stuff and get more original to the interior of the design as well, if you wanted. But I just kind of wanted to make it feel modern um, and as if maybe, you know, it's getting renovated 
and you kind of have an unlimited budget and ability. So that's kind of what we have here so far. On the first floor, I just kind of really wanted to tuck in a lot of detail and pieces because I knew the upstairs I would have to frame a lot of things into. So I just wanted to have it bright and open and, and pretty and then have that taller ceilings. And then upstairs, I kind of had to do a little bit more there then to kind of make sure that it all fit so I didn't get to quite put as much like decor stuff in as I like to do and like the wall paintings are a little clunky to try and put in dormers and that kind of stuff so I cut out some of that sort of video as well um just because um you're gonna kind of see them go in but you're not gonna see me try and like finagle the camera to get to that spot so it looks a lot easier than what it is on the video in terms of like how to zoom in and get right to that right spot to get that right like toilet paper holder in or towel holder in or whatever you're kind of looking to do so um actually and in the rendering too it's fun but the rocking chairs actually exist in the rendering if you saw the thumbnail but it is i, I was really stoked i was like oh i have that and then also um it had those hanging pot um plants and so I'm like, oh yes, this is why I waited to kind of do the Sears series for so long, all these years, because I just felt like I really couldn't get through to the design detail at all um, back in the day. But now that we've got so much content and much more of an expanded capability, I thought that this was surely going to be a winner. And I think it really started to come together. And like in terms of the game and its flexibility with designs, I know there's a lot more opportunity out there that I've already spoke to but I just think that it's it's neat that we're at least making some progress but I mean it should after you know six almost seven years now so um this one of course I made sure to get my mailbox in like right away my last build I was like oh dang it I ended up having to go back and update the building so it was really funny um and I really like being able to make it feel like it's got really good landscaping. That's like one of my favorite things to do in The Sims and like my signature sort of style. But then also to really kind of make it feel like it's got mature landscaping and that it's more realistic. So you're just going to see a lot of like plants coming in um, over the next couple minutes here in this video as everything just starts like really coming together in terms of what I wanted the vision to be for like the landscaping and, and like the outdoor amenities and stuff here. So I thought it would be kind of paying homage to maybe the people that could have lived in this little bungalow and just to make it real, feel really, you know, still usable, even though it is a lot smaller. And then of course the pool is going to be super bright. And there was some, this weird, like somehow, some reason, the way that the landscaping tool works with the pool, sometimes it's like a little jagged. So the pool does not look flat on the bottom of it. I could not flatten it. So there must be some sort of pool bug right now um, in terms of landscaping, because I ensured that it was like a completely flat lot, totally flat um, when I started. And, you know, I didn't put any sort of like terraforming or anything like that or landscaping changes um, in terms of like the actual topography of the of the design and the building or like anything you know the lot nothing so i was like um this doesn't make a lot of sense to me but okay so i ended up just kind of going with it you know a little bit and there for a minute i was trying to like mess with it and i'm like ah, just not. nope it's not gonna it's just gonna be like that and hopefully uh maxis gets it together and can fix that i'm sure they will it's kind of a weird bug <laughs> So now I'm just kind of getting all my little decor pieces together. I really, I like doing pink rooms. They're fun because I tend to kind of gravitate towards green and blue just because those are my favorite colors. But this was really fun to kind of play into like Thanksgiving coming up and Halloween coming up. So I use a little bit of those decor options in here. I try not to go too festive on the theming much because I know I end up wanting to change it more often if I don't. Um, so I, you know, kind of did some of that theming this time, but not just enough, you know, just enough. So here is our final spin around and you guys can kind of just see how it came together. And um, this one, it's just kind of really was just a really fun one. And I really appreciate you guys tuning in and checking everything out and for following. And um, yeah, so this is the Kilbourne house. 
the Sears Kit House. It was made round in like, you know, the early 1900s. So there it is in the evening and then day as well. So thanks again so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay proud and go out and do something magical.